of the hypoparathyroidism. One thing which you should remember that hypoparathyroidisms are far less common as compared to the hyperparathyroidism. The clinical problems related with clinical pathological problems related with hyperparathyroidism are far more common as compared to the problems due to hypoparathyroidism. Now, what are the causes of hypoparathyroidism? Number one, there's a group of causes related with the surgery. We say surgically induced hypoparathyroidism. Surgically induced hypoparathyroidism. Now, how surgery can produce hypoparathyroidism? Actually, during the surgery, for example, especially this type of problem may occur when you are doing surgery on thyroid gland. When you do thyroidectomy, right? When you are removing the thyroid gland, sometimes inadvertently, you also take away the parathyroid gland. As you know, parathyroid gland are very intimately related on the back of the thyroid gland. So during thyroidectomies, sometimes parathyroids are also re removed and thrown away. That may produce hypo parathyroidism. So, one surgical cause which is the most common is thyroid surgery. Thyroidectomy. Removal of thyroid. Number two, sometimes if someone has a cancer in the neck and you are doing radical surgery in the neck and you are removing lot of material from there. If you are doing radical surgery, extensive surgery in the neck, sometimes in a mistaken belief that parathyroid glands are probably lymph nodes and in, when someone has cancer and it is spreading in the neck, you are supposed to remove all the lymph nodes there. And if you fail to differentiate between the lymph node and parathyroid gland, then parathyroid gland may be inadvertently or mistakenly removed during the radical surgery of the neck, right? While they are assumed to be lymph nodes, right? So during the radical surgery of the neck, neck surgery number three sometimes we do if so, sometimes a patient come with primary hyperparathyroidism he has adenoma or hyperplasia we are supposed to remove parathyroid tissue but in a patient with primary hyperparathyroidism if you have removed excessive amount of parathyroid tissue patient may end up with the hypoparathyroidism so there are three types of surgery most commonly thyroidectomy, secondly radical neck surgery and thirdly that in a patient with primary hypoparathyroidism you have done excessive parathyroid tissue removal that may also lead to hypoparathyroidism. So these are surgical, surgically related causes of hypoparathyroidism then causes of hypoparathyroidism may be Congenital, that there may be congenital absence of the parathyroid gland. Congenital. This is classically seen in a condition called DiGeorge syndrome. What really happens in this DiGeorge syndrome that pharyngeal pouches are not developing properly. You know, third and fourth pharyngeal pouch make the parathyroid gland and thymus. Third and fourth pharyngeal pouches play a role in formation of parathyroid gland and thymus. Plus, they also play some role in development of the, you can say, cardiac outflow vessels. Now, if there is some pathology in the development of third and fourth pharyngeal pouch, patient will develop deficiency of parathyroid hormone plus he will develop deficiency of thymus tissue. Thymus will not be formed. You know, thymus is also formed from the third and fourth pouch. Do you know that or not? Then th uh, third and fourth pharyngeal pouches lead to the formation of parathyroid gland as well as thymus formation. Now in these patients, as well as there is some role in development of the cardiac outflow vessels. Now, if some, in Dijaj syndrome, if patient has damage to the developing third and fourth pouch, patient will develop hypoparathyroidism and of course patient will develop severe hypocalcemia with hyperphosphatemia. You understand why? Yes. Right? Plus, patient will be developing severe deficiency of thymus 
and when thymic tissue is not there, do you think T cells will mature properly? When T cells will not mature pro properly, they say he will develop cell mediated immunity deficiency. They will be deficient cell mediated immunity. And especially patient will develop repeatedly viral infections, rather we should say infant. Baby will develop repeatedly viral infections, fungal infections, right, and other uh, organism, microbial infections, which are dependent on cell mediated immunity for the clearance, right? And of course, when calcium level become very low, these babies may develop tetany, which I will discuss later. So there can be surgically induced hypoparathyroidism or there can be congenitally related hypoparathyroidism. Then there can be familial hypoparathyroidism. There can be familial, in some families there are abnormal genes which are inherited. Hypoparathyroidism. Right? Now in familial cases, usually these patients develop multiple problems. They have reduced parathyroid hormone function, they have reduced adrenal gland function, adrenal gland deficiency and with that they develop fungal infections in the skin and we call it chronic mucocutaneous candidiasis. You know candida infection, fungus which make white patches on the tongue, right? So they develop chronic mucocutaneous, muco Cutaneous. Mucocutaneous means the skin. Cutaneous skin. Muco means mucous membrane. So these patients may develop chronic mucocutaneous candidiasis. Candidiasis. Right? And this whole syndrome is sometimes called autoimmune polyendocrine syndrome. What do we call it? Autoimmune polyendocrine. Autoimmune poly endocrine syndrome. Please don't confuse it with men. That is a different syndrome in which multiple endocrine neoplasia develops. In this case, this hyperfunction of the glandular tissue. In men, there is a hyperfunction of the glandular tissue, right? Men develop as a part in relation to the para hyperparathyroidism, primary hyperparathyroidism. This is developing in relation to hypoparathyroidism, right? So, how many causes of hypoparathyroidism we have discussed? Surgically induced, when inadvertently you have removed the parathyroid gland or congenital parathyroid gland have not developed and especially along with them, if thymus does not develop, patient will develop, baby will develop tetany, along with that he will develop cell mediated immune system deficiency which may lead to more viral infections and fungal infections and intracellular other infections and then familial hypoparathyroidism which has also uh, deficiency of adrenal gland and chronic mucocutaneous candidiasis in this condition is also called autoimmune polyendocrine syndrome. Is that right? Then there is another cause that is called idiopathic hypoparathyroidism. Idiopathic, even though it's rare, but its pathology is very interesting. Idiopathic, yes, idiopathic hypo. Parathyroidism. Actually, here's a very interesting pathology in this case. You know, there are chief cells, and chief cells are special receptors which are actually calcium sensors. You remember these are calcium sensing receptors? Calcium sensing receptors. Actually, immune system make immune headquarters make autoantibodies which bind with this receptor and stimulate the receptor and stimulate the receptor. You know, autoantibodies, auto when they target a tissue, they modify the function of the tissue. Usually, they destroy the tissue. But in this case, immune headquarters make autoantibodies in the patient. These autoantibodies bind with calcium sensing receptors on the chief cells and overstimulate the receptors. If these receptors are overstimulating, it means they will give signal as if there is a high level of, as if there is a high level of ionized calcium. So, they will suppress the release of, there will be reduced release of parathyroid hormone and naturally when parathyroid hormone will be less, hypoparathyroidism will develop. Are you understanding? Yes. But here I should make another comparison that in some patients, please this comparison should be noted very well and understood clearly. 
in some patients due to some mutation due to some mutation right these receptors are under sensitive you can say calcium sensing receptors are mutant are mutant and if they are mutant or dysfunctional and they become less sensitive they are less sensitive to ionized calcium free calcium now right in this may develop in some families also now if you are inherited the genes which make less sensitive receptors maybe you have no, a normal level of free calcium but they are not sensing it well so they what they will do they will be blind to the presence of normal calcium so they will assume as if calcium is less because they are not sensitive to calcium look for example when calcium level in the blood is 10 they should give 10 signal when calcium level is 8 they should give 8 signal is it right now problem with them is they are less sensitive even if calcium level is 10 they are giving less signal if they are giving less signal cell assumes that calcium is less in the body so cell will produce more parathyroid hormone are you understanding or not clear because i want these two conditions to be clear first we concentrate on this for example there is a patient sitting here and these receptors are less sensitive if they are less sensitive even at normal calcium level they are unable to sense the normal calcium so cell assume as if calcium is less than normal so cell produce more parathyroid hormone when cell is producing more parathyroid hormone that will lead to hypercalcemia that will produce hyper calcemia right and with that hypercalcemia in the urine there will be hypo hypocalciuria of course in the blood calcium will go up and the urine calcium will go less because of parathyroid is more so hypo calciuria of course you are right that phosphate will be more in the urine uh, urine also but right now we concentrate only on the calcium right again listen there is a patient right suppose this patient name is ronald and what is happening his receptor is very very less sensitive receptors are lazy they are not reporting that there is enough calcium so when cells receptors are lazy receptors are mutant receptors are hypersensitive so they are not reporting to the cell there is enough calcium so cells wrongly assume that ionized calcium is less so cell is wrongly producing more parathyroid hormone when there is more parathyroid hormone serum calcium level will go up and urinary calcium level will go down so patient in these patient there is a problem we call this problem that there is familial because many members of these families develop this problem it is inherited problem we say there is familial hypocalciuric hypocalci uric hypercalcemia hyper calcemia again in the blood calcium is hyper and in the urine calcium is hypo and the urine calcium is hypo and the blood calcium is hyper i hope you understand it actually this condition should have discussed when i discuss hyperparathyroidism right but i forget to mention there so it was a good chance to compare that uh, if these receptors are under sensitive they are under stimulated parathyroid will be more produced and patient will develop hypocalciuric hypercalcemia but let's come to the this was ronald and let's come to another patient suppose this is ventura now what's wrong here here receptors are there but receptors normally these receptors which should be stimulated by calcium but unfortunately ventura developed the auto antibodies which bind with the receptors and over stimulated they stimulated more than the calcium so when these receptor system is over stimulated calcium senses are over stimulated cells wrongly believe that there is high calcium so parathyroid will become less and of course hypoparathyroidism will develop am i clear so again let's sum up these two condition in ronald calcium uh, calcium sensors were under sensitive under stimulated and under sensitive and in ventura calcium receptors were calcium sensors were 
ओवर सेंसिटिव और ओवर स्टिमुलेटेड बाय द आउटर एंटीबॉडीज इज द राइट सो इन रोनल्ड व्हेन रिसेप्टर्स आर अंडर सेंसिटिव सेल्स आर अंडर रिपोर्टेड अबाउट द सीरम कैल्शियम सो सेल प्रोड्यूसेस मोर पैराथायराइड हार्मोन एंड रोनल्ड डेवलप्स अ टाइप ऑफ हाइपर पैराथायराइडिज्म इन वेंचुरा बिकॉज द रिसेप्टर्स आर ओवर स्टिमुलेटेड सो सेल्स आर रॉंगली reported that there is the high calcium so cells are producing less parathyroid hormone and she is developing hypoparathyroidism is that really clear yes. that's good